Happy Monday, and welcome to the 10th episode of the Sneak Preview, the podcast where we follow the current movie release calendar. I'm Connor Izagari. I'm Austin Johnson. I'm Brianna Moore. And I can't believe we're 10 episodes in already. I mean, I feel like we <laughs> yeah. just started this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's Zoom, and it's, it's uh, forced, uh, not forced, challenged us to watch a lot of movies. It's forced us to watch a few. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you without got, this podcast, I don't know if I would have watched Tom and Jerry. <laughs> I was going to mention Tom and Jerry. Yeah, that's a good shout. Yeah. Um, we're no longer the newest podcast under Filmgasm Productions. That honor goes to the Giggle Guys with their new podcast that covers comedy movies. Episode one on The Other Guys just dropped this past Friday, and new episodes will drop every Friday. So looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Juwan and Andrew doing a good job. Uh, have a lot of fun because we don't get to talk about comedy too much. So it's nice to have that. Yeah. Our stuff just ends up being funny by accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It could, it could be about, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, the witch and <laughs> we'll have fun. <laughs> yeah, There's only like two or three episodes in our entire catalog where we're both just kind of somber the whole time. And I know exactly what they are. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've got a fully loaded show for you today. Four movies are up for discussion. Coming to America, Boss Level, Raya and the Last Dragon, and our new primary, Moxie. If you've come looking for our thoughts on Chaos Walking, you'll be disappointed. I can't speak for my two friends here, but I, for one, am sick and tired of young adult, post-apocalypse, villains in white, special teenagers, probably America after, quote-unquote, the fall movies. (laughs) Hey, I literally just had a rant about this to my mom. I was like, I'm so tired of movies like that. Yeah. I think that's so played out. That genre, yeah. it had its moment in the sun with The Hunger Games, yes. flew too close to it with The Maze Runner, and yes. fell hard with Divergent. Hopefully it stays away for good this time. I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 is, that is the mecca, those three. Yeah. Those three series are the, the rise and fall of that style of filmmaking. It's not going to work anymore. It's the same movie. It's the same franchise three times. It's ridiculous. I, I wish I'd, you know, I wish I'd thrown my hat into the ring. As a writer, I wish I'd, I'd like, figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> you wish you would have been in between Hunger Games and Maze Runner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would have been so easy. I just have, you know, America 2028, or as we call it now, the fallen land. And some, you know, <laughs> white protagonist with a weird-ass name is super special for some reason has like a hot best friend and then a hot weirdo who she ends up being with. I swear to God, it's, it's a formula. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to talk about another one. I just didn't, I didn't want to. It's all just a love triangle, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A love triangle that I don't give a shit about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's others out there, but those are the, those are the big ones for sure. Yeah. I mean, God, to, to get there, to write that book and then to fail. That's that's even worse. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at what happened last week in film. Last week in film. First up, trailer time. Uh, two to discuss this week. First one, Voyagers, set for theater release on April 9th. Uh, This looks interesting, kind of like a Solaris interstellar kind of thing with uh, Colin Farrell and other people I don't remember. (laughs) You guys? Yeah, Colin's, yeah, he's, I haven't watched the trailer because I don't, don't, you know me, man, we've had this conversation many times on Sneak Preview. (laughs) Colin is one of the actors that I, especially the past, I don't know, five to ten years, I love the decisions he makes, you know, specifically the ones to be like in multiple Yorgos Lanthimos movies, uh, you know, I, and to be like in the beguiled, I, I trust him like wholeheartedly and I'll, I'll kind of see anything he's in at this point. Yeah. He's kind of become one of my, he's one of those actors now where I see his name and I'm like, I'm probably going to watch this. I think, yeah, I think it kind of started with in Bruges, where it was like from then on out, it's like, uh, yeah, I'm kind of, he, he's one of those guys I really like to watch. For me, and <laughs> I know people are going to not like this. I don't care. For me, it started with, with Daredevil. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Bullseye. I, 
I also like Miami Vice, you know, so. All right, so we're in the same boat. Uh, uh, we don't mind Colin Farrell's alcoholic days where he was just picking scripts. Yeah, apparently I've heard Colin talk about Miami Vice, you know, and he doesn't remember filming. <laughs> uh, him and Jamie. <laughs> I'm surprised that movie made it out of the, the cutting room floor with Colin Farrell drunk off his ass and Jamie Foxx, you know, letting his ego drive after winning an Oscar. It's kind of amazing that film <laughs> worked out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but Voyagers, I think, looks intriguing. But these space movies, I mean, it goes back to, you know, they're, they're a formula. Like, I want this to stand out, but I also don't want to be too weird where I'm not going to enjoy it. Passengers, voyagers. <laughs> uh, here we are. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I I trust it again because I, I love Colin. I, I think it, it might be like a kind of subgenre that's a little bit played out, but that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Brianna, any thoughts on that? Space movies? I think they're depressing, so I don't watch them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> they 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 can be like like what which ones do you would you say are kind of all of them especially interstellar i haven't even yeah. seen it but i'm just like that looks like it's gonna make me depressed i'm not gonna watch it it's or, yeah or gravity i feel like gravity would kind of rock you yeah just the thought of being in space kind of sounds depressing did you like see around. did you see ad astra with us yes yeah 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 with Brad it Pitt. was kind of depressing yeah well it's very depressing <laughs> yeah. the story is also really depressing so yeah it always feels just like really cold and yeah. sad every yeah. time you like watch that's the vibe i get so it's like i'm just gonna stay away from this drama fair enough now Thank you, you get now you get why i love star wars <laughs> <laughs> it's space but exciting with a little bit of optimism yeah yeah that's why i like guardians Some of it, like yeah. it's safe, but it's still fun and yeah it's not- and guardians has the <clears throat> has the the thing that's well it's attached to the mcu so you gotta yeah you gotta watch it you know it's mm-hmm. It's totally attached to this giant, massive 23 movie. Now it's TV shows and <laughs> yeah. all that jazz. So you, you kind of, Guardians fits in. It still has the same kind of tone that, that fits right. Yeah. But I, I, I get that. They're, they're kind of, I have to be in the mood for something like Gravity or Interstellar, you know, something like the Ad Astra. It's not something I'm just going to pop on on Tuesday night, you know, for no reason. <laughs> they're also a genre of film that, works so much better on the big screen because you have that spectacle like i haven't watched gravity since i saw it at the movies i thought it was great but i haven't wanted to just you know put it on my tv yeah i feel you on that yeah yeah so maybe voyagers and it looks like you know interstellar on crack so i don't know what it's going to be but it looks (laughs) insane (laughs) yeah it does yeah i've I've obviously not seen the trailer but i've I've, you know read read things and it seems like a movie that's going to go for it so i I'm in. We'll do something on here, I'm sure, about it. Yeah, for sure. And uh, the other trailer that came out was a movie called Thunder Force, starring Melissa McCarthy and Octavia Spencer as middle-aged women who get superpowers. Yeah, I did see this one. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. (laughs) On paper, on on paper, this sounds terrible. But I got to say that trailer was entertaining as hell, and I want to see this. Yes, I, I, entertaining. We'll see. I, but I'm mostly intrigued by those two. Those two have had a really interesting past decade, and for them two to be in the same movie is kind of kind, kind of cool. fascinating. Yeah, I'm interested in that. Yeah, yeah, me too. And it looks like he's got a great supporting cast. You know, Bobby Cannavale, Jason Bateman is like a crab monster or something. <laughs> Perfect be an interesting week uh, those both come out on the same day so that's going to be uh, right. interesting uh moving on hugh grant and sophia lillis have joined the cast of the dungeons and dragons movie they're joining chris pine michelle rodriguez and justice smith the film is set for release on may 27th 2022 and i feel like we keep talking about this movie <laughs> yeah it keeps getting brought up D and then i have to kind of share how i vaguely know about it <laughs> so i'm just gonna just gonna pass it back over because yeah it's gonna keep coming back up like just cast everybody at once and give us an announcement stop doing it one at a time it's ridiculous uh, and it's a, such an oddball cast like 
Hugh Grant has been making some weird movie decisions in the past like 10 years. I mean, I don't know, maybe he's too old to be the lead in a rom-com now. So he's just, I don't know. You know, there was Cloud Atlas. There was The Gentleman. Now it's, you know, Man from Uncle and Dungeons and Dragons. Who even is sure. he anymore? I don't, I don't know. I've never really known what, especially if he doesn't have the rom-com going for him steady. I'm not sure what he is. <laughs> I, the only reason I'm going to see Dungeons and Dragons is for this show. Like, I don't have any investment in that whatsoever, but I have a feeling it's going to be the big movie of that week. And hopefully by May 2022, you know, it'll make some money. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You, yeah, a year and about 14 months from now. Yeah. Yeah. You're so big. Uh, I was excited about this casting news. Disney's upcoming live action Pinocchio has added Cynthia Erivo as the Blue Fairy and Joseph Gordon-Levitt as Jiminy Cricket. Wow. <laughs> How about that? This is the first I'm ever hearing about this. Yeah, me too. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Disney's been kind of keeping this one under wraps. Uh, it, here's the rest of the cast. Uh, Tom Hanks is Geppetto. Uh, Keegan-Michael Key is Honest John. Lorraine Bracco is Sophia the Seagull. Luke Evans is the coachman. And Benjamin Evan Ainsworth is Pinocchio. Robert Zemeckis is directing. Film is set to start filming next month. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah. It was inevitable. Disney's probably going to be taking every film they've ever done and making it a live action. Yeah. Robert Zemeckis, though. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> they, they had me at Zemeckis. Yeah. Wow. How about that? Yeah, that's that that's that's pretty fascinating i'm i'm super interested i <clears throat> i haven't seen the original in so so long it's been ages but but yeah that i'm kind of hyped for that i've never seen pinocchio oh wow oh. Yeah, yeah i think you'd like it man yeah i know i would i i was so honed in on the 90s with disney when i was a kid that i barely touched the rest of disney's catalog apart from like hey. the black cauldron and robin hood that was kind of it yeah, fair and enough. the Jungle Book. Oh yeah, I love the Jungle Book. That's what sixties. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That, that one's great. So I still got a lot of homework, but uh, yeah. yeah, I watched you, the uh, Sword of the Stone. All right, you like mm-hmm. that one, Sword of the Stone? I do. Um, I think it ends a little prematurely, but I thought it was good. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Well, like we now we got King Arthur. Let's see, let's see the King Arthur story. But nope, <laughs> just it, that's it. Yeah, ambiguous. <laughs> Any Disney movie needed a sequel. It's the Sword and the Stone. <laughs> uh, but like when Dumbo came out a couple of years ago, I finally watched the original Dumbo and thought this is kind of cute. And you know, Sleeping Beauty, I watched that for the first time a couple of years ago. So I'm I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Slowly but surely, as the live actions come out, you can <laughs> you can go back and watch the old ones. Yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, a couple sad announcements. Uh, Michael Wolf Snyder, the sound designer on Nomadland, has died at 35 years old from an apparent suicide, which was crazy. Um, probably going to win an Oscar for sound design uh, posthumously. Uh, I looked into his filmography and he'd done this and like a whole bunch of short films. And uh, just kind of crazy. Yeah. 35. Yeah. It's super sad. <clears throat> really upsetting. Uh, hate to hear that. Uh, yeah. I'm like working on a movie that just kind of came out and was starting to breathe a life. And it's really sad. Really sad to hear that stuff. Uh, he yeah, did extremely good work on that movie, and that, that there's something we can you know sort of remember him by. So you know his legacy will live on. Yep, it will. And then also Tony Hendra, uh, who played band manager Ian Faith in 1984's This Is Spinal Tap, he also died at oh. 79 after a long battle with Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, Spinal Tap is a fucking classic and hilarious movie and i love that this guy just like this was it this was all he did as an actor he did a bunch he wrote a lot but this was his one gig as an actor uh it's all you need it's uh 
one of the most, yeah, like influential in its genre, right? As far as, you know, mockumentaries and that stuff kind of goes, it's, it's one of the best and one of the, one of the biggest and one of the ones that still inspires. So if you're a part of just that, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, hopefully at some point on one of these shows, we'll get to talk about Spinal Tap. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, the popular Texas based movie theater chain Alamo Draft House Cinema has filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy. That's unfortunate. Uh, founder Tim League issued a press release assuring fans that Draft House isn't going anywhere. It's simply the best way to keep the franchise alive for the moment. They have not been making money for over a year now. And uh, when I read that headline, I was just like, fuck. <laughs> that's my, that's our place. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. One of, one of the places that, you know, we would go to, go to see movies, you know, one of the, one of the few here in San Antonio that was, was really worth your trip. You know, uh, I would say, I would say it's at the top of my list along with, along with the Bijou. I just adored the choices that the Bijou makes. I don't really know what's going on over there. Um, I know embassy still going and, you know, Santicos is trying their best, no. but this is sad because yeah, it's a place we got, we all, all three of us worked, you yeah. know? And so it's not just a place we went to see movies, but it's a place we kind of, became a part of our lives for a little bit and, you know it's where brown and i met and here we are and we have a daughter together it's where you and i met connor and we have a bunch of podcasts going on and you know it's a, it definitely affected my life like deeply and you know i don't I, I i feel really sad when i definitely hear something like that or read something like that yeah well i mean you know it's not hyperbole to say that you know without the draft house these podcasts never would have happened yeah <laughs> so i owe quite a lot of that a lot to that place um i yeah, heard there's no other place you and i would have met i mean yeah uh, i don't see how else we would have crossed paths or i mean that's same for brown and i probably so yeah i have a tremendous amount to owe. <laughs> <laughs> To, you know, I mean, Willow's not born. You know, these are the these are the little paths of life that we take, and Draft House is part of ours. Yeah, so it's sad. Well, hopefully, you know, it's going to stick around. They are just, you know, they're getting some help. They are going to close uh, some of their less uh, than you know great performing locations. I know that the New Braunfels one is going to go, which sucks because I just moved to San Marcos and that was going to be my Draft House. Yeah. But you know, and the Ritz, the flagship, that's closing too. Yeah, which that's devastating. Yeah. Yeah. Admittedly, though, they only had two theaters, so I don't know what they were like. They lasted quite a while for just having two theaters. Yeah, because they would have people come speak at the, you know, speak at the theater and whatnot. It was a place where, you know, it was is kind of like a packed house. It just sucks. It just sucks. Like that, that feeling you get when you see. Um, whether it be an Avengers Endgame or a, or an, like an I, Tanya or, or an old school movie like Jaws, like when it's a packed house in there for any of those movies, it's just one of the coolest things uh, you know, I can think of. Well, on the 27th, I, I felt like showing Draft House some love. And on the 27th, I'm going to be attending a, uh, a Q&A they're filming with uh, Stephen Colbert interviewing the Lord of the Rings cast for like an anniversary. So I'm going to go there and just be there for your draft house. Good. I, I want to do that. That's awesome. Good for you. <laughs> With that, let's talk about the Golden Globes. So uh, our last last week's episode was filmed before the Globes, so we weren't able to talk about the Globes. But here we are after the Globes, and now we can talk about the Globes. Yeah, they've been breathing for a week. Yeah. Let's see if, you know, after kind of, you know, ruminating in this see if it's we think these awards are deserved uh start with best motion picture foreign language uh taken by minari no one was really surprised at that uh despite the film kind of not really fitting the category being an american production with an american filmmaker and half the movie being in english uh it won best foreign film yeah what do you guys think? Uh, yeah it makes no sense <laughs> It really doesn't. I wish this would go to another round by Thomas Vinterberg, and I wish Minari was in the drama category like it should be. I just, this 
it's just kind of bullshit, you know, and it's lazy. <clears throat> it's very lazy. And it's, you know, there's filmmakers that I adore, like the, the best, the best one I can think of is Inglorious Bastards that has all these different languages also isn't, it, it isn't filmed in America. <laughs> you know, And I, I just, that doesn't make any sense. It's less American, I guess, you know, and involves more different things than this movie Minari, which is just about a movie moving from California to Arkansas, you know? So it's just weird how, what are the rules? You know, what, what are the rules? Does it have to be a white guy <laughs> that directed it <laughs> for it to be just in the drama? You know, is it you know, anything else is for it? It doesn't make much sense. I, I really wish Minari could compete properly. Um, but I don't, that goes down to the root of, I don't really like the foreign language category period. Yeah. You know, I wish that was diminished anyway. And then we didn't have to separate the two. And that way there's a stigma or we could get rid of the stigma that people have, you know, about, Oh, foreign. So these are just kind of over there. And these are the ones I'm supposed to watch. And I, I don't like that. You know, I, I wish they could mix and mesh and I wish it was more like that. And I, th I think, Obviously, Parasite at the Oscars did a good job of kind of breaking those walls down. I hope we see more of that. But if we're going to do things like that to Minari, then it's not going to work. So can't be taking two steps forward and one step back. You know what I mean? Well, this is the this is the Hollywood foreign press. They don't have any steps forward. <clears throat> yeah, so, that, we still got to hold them accountable, those bastards. <laughs> yeah, well, judging by their incredibly tone deaf, like, apology about not having any black members and they're just like clearly reading off a teleprompter like we are gonna try better next time we are so sorry like and then look at and then look they're like oh guys in the categories that we have people that are black we gotta let you know we, they gotta win and that was that made it very fishy seeing the results you're like hmm what's going on here what were you guys what's going on why yeah <laughs> That, that kind of weird ass apology because I saw what you're talking about. I saw that because I didn't get to watch the show live, but I saw that apology. That was just so awkward. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Like it would have been better to say nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like we know you guys are just behind. <laughs> you know you don't care. You've not cared for decades. Yeah, yeah. Stop acting like all of a sudden it was an accident. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So after foreign film, we have best animated film, which uh, Soul won that one. That was pretty expected. Yeah. Uh, personally, I was I was pulling for Onward, but I knew that was a long shot. <laughs> yeah, especially when it's Pixar versus Pixar, and yeah, everyone everyone just was like so obsessed with Soul, and it just came out not that long ago. Onward was out what in April of last year, so yeah. people. People forget too easily, man. I love Onward too, though. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping. I, I'm. It's probably come out in the you know the weird limbo where movies don't get any nominations. But I hope Raya and the Last Dragon gets some love at the Oscars for animated film. But I don't think does. it will. I bet you it gets some. I bet you it gets some love. Maybe not the win, but yeah. Um, best original song went to Scene from The Life Ahead, which I was not expecting at all. I've never heard of the song or the movie. And I was really pulling for Tigress and Tweed or um, the song from Judas and the Black Messiah, whose name escapes me. But uh, I don't, fight I, for you. That's what it was. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah. This category is not my favorite because usually <clears throat> these songs that are like, usually like at the end, you know, like at the credits or something or like, they seem like similar, like the names of the songs and just kind of like the, it's like, you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, it, it, it kind of has to be there, I guess, but it's just not my favorite category. Typically I tend to, you know, not really be that invested unless there's a Bond theme or an Elton John song on the line. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, this time. Eh. Um, best original score went to Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross and John Batiste for soul. Uh, pretty cool. Love that the Nine Inch Nails guy is now a film composer. <laughs> yeah, did you know, Brianna, that those guys, Trent, Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, also did Social Network, uh, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Gone Girl, mid-90s, 
They've yeah. kind of they've kind of been all over the place, you know. Really cool. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, they already oh. have an Oscar. Yeah. And then Soul, yeah, yeah, isn't that crazy? It's a very that's, cool. uh, that's what I'm saying. Very, um, it's a variety of a uh, of a background they have going on. Oh that's yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I'm uh. I always like it when like animated films can, you know, grab some other awards. That's always exciting. Oh, for sure, man. Like if, uh, you know, a guy like Randy Newman's working on, you know, Toy Story. <laughs> That's always nice. <laughs> uh, best uh, screenplay went to Aaron Sorkin for The Trial of the Chicago 7. Cool with that. That, you know, screenplay is always his strongest suit. Happy for that. I can't remember what all else was up, but yeah, I, they, there are some some obviously wonderful moments in most Sorkin scripts. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what he's known for at this point is just kind of having these kind of blast off moments, and Trial has a few of those. Yes, indeed. Uh, best supporting actor went to Daniel Kaluuya for Judas and the Black Messiah. That was awesome. Uh, what was not awesome was his technical difficulties that almost killed his speech. That was yeah. awkward as hell. Yeah, it sucks, right? Yeah, of course. Well, to have like, you know, when the Emmys did this, they gave everybody their own equipment. Like they gave, they sent everybody equipment like, hey, use this because this works. The Globes just let everyone use their phone. So that's why there were constant dropouts. It's silly. What it, it's like it's a high school fucking meeting, like before school, like, hey, guys, let's just get together. Oh, fuck it. Use your phones. It's fine. <laughs> this is a multi-billion dollar award show run by people who can afford it. So I don't really, I, I, I'm, I don't, I don't want the Golden Globes anymore. I don't think we. No, need. no. I've I've heard I've heard multiple podcasts. I've read multiple articles about just ideas. Let's just fucking replace them with something cooler. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. awesome. Yeah. The fucking RC Cola of award shows. We don't need it. Yeah. Yeah, can we get some, like, at least some fucking Pepsi or something? Come on. Yeah. The Emmys. The Emmys are Pepsi. Yeah. And the Oscars cool. are Coca-Cola. Oscars are Coca-Cola. And then what What are the Grammys? Dr. Pepper? The Grammys are Diet Coke, and I don't drink that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really into the Grammys. They're all silly, you know, but the Oscars are the only one that I kind of try to watch and pay attention to what's going on. Yeah. The I Oscars... Know. Grammys are yours. Grammys are definitely up my alley. No, I don't. Yeah, I haven't paid attention to popular music in a very long time. I think uh, Grammys way easier than probably the Globes. You, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. definitely could. I mean, and plus it's just music, so yeah. that's nice. I feel like I'm more diverse with my choices with music than I am with like movies and TV shows. Yeah, fair enough. We all have our own thing. The Golden Globes, I'm really just, you know, straight up popularity contest. Most of these are bought and paid for, it's like openly. It's ridiculous. The the corruption, they're not even, they're not even fucking hiding it anymore. No. They're just like, yeah, we don't have black members and we're paying for all of these awards. So fuck off. Yeah. I wish they would just say that. Just be like, yeah, we're openly racist and we don't care. Fuck off. You're still going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of being like, Sorry, we are aware. We will be more progressive. This is not oldest, who we like the oldest people in the fucking like Hollywood foreign press come out there and are like, we are progressive. We promise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're old as bloody time. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. It's frustrating, you know. But yeah, what, I don't know. What do you expect after like? just years of so many bizarre nominations and bizarre wins and what on earth is happening here what was the animated movie that won last year what was it or missing was it link two? yeah yeah the bigfoot movie what? i remember that the fuck <laughs> <laughs> you know they do shit like that where it beat toy story 4 and you're like come on like what are we doing here <laughs> so silly um, best actor in a motion picture musical or comedy went to Sasha Baron Cohen for Borat two. Yeah. Totally cool. I loved his speeches because he doesn't like nobody gives less of a fuck than Sasha Baron Cohen. And I respect that. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. Didn't he? I, I didn't see it, but I heard he didn't he talk about how like social media is just kind of like fucking with people or something, or was that something else? That was something. I he might have said something about that, but he said like he wanted to thank a breakout actor he had the pleasure of working with, somebody who gave it their all in a performance oh, yeah. of the ages, and it was Rudy Giuliani. He was thinking. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's great. I love that. <laughs> He's building it up and then <laughs> Rudy, well done. Best. Um, best actor in a motion picture drama went to Chadwick Boseman for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom in a very emotional uh, moment in the show. His, his wife accepted it and uh, it was very touching, but very hard to watch. Yeah. What is, what? Well, it's kind of like, what is she supposed to say sort of thing, you know? And yeah. she kind of she kind of said the exact right thing, I, I think, you know, yeah. when when you were kind of speechless, she conjured up the right the right kind of stuff. Yeah, very true. I thought it was weird at the Globes because they were it was all remote. So they had everybody kind of, you know, zoom in, but they kept yeah. panning over to the losers to get their reactions. And it's just weird to see them have to, like, fake smile at the camera until it goes away. I mean, there's better ways to do this. <laughs> there's yeah. better ways. Fringy. Yeah. <laughs> um, best actress in a supporting role went to Jodie Foster for The Mauritanian, which nobody was expecting. Uh, usually the political thrillers are just kind of there for, you know, to fill space. So nobody thought this was going to get any love. I have not seen the movie yet, uh, but now I want to, to see if, you know, this was deserved. Well, yeah. And, She's pretty awesome anyway. So, all right, yeah, I, I'm interested in this anyways. Yeah. yeah, she's she's kind of a legend at this point. Yeah. When they were announcing the names, her dog jumped on her. Her and her wife were in bed, and the dog just like flopped. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Foster, they had this like giant lab, and it was just like ah, it was funny. <laughs> I love that. I love that hanging out with her wife. That's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> celebrities are people too. Her and her dogs, yeah. Look at oh, look at this. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, best actress, mo- uh, motion picture, musical, or comedy went to Rosamund Pike for "I Care a Lot." Another sh- big shock. Uh, Would have thought Mar- Maria Bakalova had this in the bag, but here we are. Really, I, yeah, really. I, I I read a few things. I you know I haven't seen a lot of these movies that were nominated. But I, I read a lot of stuff that said that Rosamund Pike was was their 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 prediction, and I I thought that would be who you were kind of pulling for, right? No, not in the slightest. I wanted Maria Bakalova, but oh, you were pulling for Maria. I okay. was big time. Uh, Rosamund Pike did a good job, but and you know it might just be for me her character is so ridiculously despicable that it's hard to root for that kind of a performance. She was great. She was just such a horrible person yeah and borat too you got some just amazing arcs with maria yeah well somebody who's you know a, i think she's bulgarian or I, think, I don't know but an actress who had not really done anything to immerse herself like that and like almost kind of uh show up sasha baron cohen that's impressive yeah, I agree. I agree. And and she does the most wild stuff in the movie and doesn't just beat him acting wise at times, Sasha, but goes goes over the top more than him. And uh, that's yeah. that's it. That's saying a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <For Sasha. laughs> oh, man. Best actress motion picture drama went to um, Andrew Day for the United States versus Billy Holiday, which is cool. Uh, nobody was expecting that. Everyone kind of thought the film was really underwhelming. But uh, if anything deserved to win from that movie, it was her. Yeah. 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 So good for her. Uh, best director went to Chloe Zhao for Nomad Land. Everyone was kind of expecting that one. She's kind of swept the entire awards season. Uh, good. <laughs> yeah. As you should have. Good, good for Chloe. Yeah. Best motion picture, musical, or comedy went to Borat 2. Ah. And best drama went to Nomadland. Yes. So not a lot of surprises towards the end of the show. I was really hoping Promising Young Woman was going to pull one out there, but it didn't. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think the 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 big surprise is Franny not winning uh, yeah. best actor and Andrew Day. Like you said, the movie hasn't done too too well uh, with you know critics and some fans alike, but she has been the standout for everybody. Everybody who has an opinion on the film has pretty much said across the board that she's awesome. So it was really it's really cool to see her, you know, get that win. And you were talking about Maria kind of being an up and comer. So is so is Andrea, you know, and yeah. to do that is <laughs> to play to play Billy uh in that way in that film and kind of carry the movie you know really on her back uh just just re- a really cool win i think it deserved um i think Frances mcdormand is doing awesome stuff but i have no problem with andrew beating her no problem do you think she has a shot at an oscar nomination possibly a win definitely a nomination win we'll see man uh i don't know i think i still have my money on francis for the oscar but I think Andrew definitely is going to get nominated. Yeah. Yeah. We get the Oscar nominations uh, next Monday and I'm, yeah. I'm very excited. I don't know. I am completely in the dark. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. No idea. No idea. It's, <laughs> you know, sometimes you get let down and sometimes you, you just see, Oh, this is very typical. And I, this year is the most unpredictable kind of all of all time because of, you know, COVID and just the uh, all of 2020 was so strange with the movie calendar. So. It's going to be interesting. Do you think if COVID hadn't happened, we'd be looking at a different set of films? For sure, man. I think, I think first off, you know, I think a certain James Bond film would have come out and be up for some technical awards. I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's possible, man. (laughs) It rarely happens. Bond films, apart from the song, usually get shut out almost entirely. Yes, yes. I think song and technical stuff. I think French Dispatch is going to be up for some stuff. I think Dune would be up for some stuff. uh, For sure. And who knows what else, you know, it's just hard to kind of tell. Yeah. And then, who? and and then of course we, the Oscars would be, would have already happened, you know, in in February or right now, you know, they would be happening in February or or early March. Uh, So all of that has changed. The schedule changed, you know, the way movies come out changed, the, the, the deadline changed. So yeah, for sure it'd be, I think it would look a lot different. Well, I guess we'll never know. No. This is gonna the be, lost year. <laughs> yeah, the lost year. This, that's what this is. Oh my God. So before we dive into Moxie, let's talk about some of the week's other releases. Uh, first up, Boss Level which is currently available on Hulu. I was not expecting that. I thought this was a theater release. I went on Hulu to watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and I see Boss Level, and I'm like, oh, fuck, my, my weekend just changed. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, pretty exciting movie. Gotta say, it's the best Groundhog Day movie since Groundhog Day. <laughs> wow, okay. Are there any contenders in there, or, or is this just kind of it? I, I wasn't a fan of Edge of Tomorrow. I haven't seen Source Code. I haven't seen Palm Springs. So I don't have a lot to uh, rank it against. But in my opinion, it, it's the best one. Fair enough. I like that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, Frank Grillo is a special forces guy who is married to a brilliant scientist who figures out a way to stop time. But like why? I don't. It's not really talked about much in the movie, like how that helps. But um, Mel Gibson's this evil tyrant who's like, I want that. And she traps Frank Grillo in a, like one day to keep it out of Mel Gibson's hands. And Frank Grillo, as we, like when we meet him in the, at the beginning of the film, he's been in here for like a year. And he's okay. like, and this day assassins are hunting him because Mel Gibson thinks he has the time travel device. So he has to dodge assassins every single day. And he's kind of cavalier about it now. And he's just like, oh, there's that asshole with the machete. Oh, there's the helicopter. <laughs> like, it's really funny. <laughs> That's fantastic. It proved Frank Grillo's resilience as a leading man. And I really hope he gets more work. I like that. Yeah, it's a good shot. I'm, I, I, I'll, I'll try to get to this one. Do you, did you give it a, an eight? I did, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I also threw it in the book of filmgasm. So I think that's a great potential uh, filmgasm for the future. Hell yeah. You have any interest in that? Mm, possibly. I could. Is, is that kind of is that your thing at all? I mean, I don't think we've watched many movies like that. <laughs> mm, 
I, I will give it a try. Yeah. I know I've been kind of like picky on what I want to consume. So I'll definitely give it a try. Well, yeah. And you started WandaVision. So, you know. I finally, oh. yeah. Started WandaVision. Nice. <laughs> and I feel like you're shushing about that because, Kevin, you started already. You finished it, right? I finished it. Yeah. Last week was the finale. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, two episodes behind i was just putting it off because i felt like it was going to be a disappointment i was afraid it was going to be a disappointment but i'm pleasantly surprised cool i won't say anything to sway your opinion oh no <laughs> well it just wait is it disappointing you i won't say any I, i'm pleading the fifth i'm swiss not saying anything it's awesome oh. at certain points and there's other things that i wish they hadn't said that kind of built up a little too much expectations i'll just say that oh okay okay fair okay. enough yeah okay i'm not in any way saying it's bad or not worth your time it's just maybe lower your expectations okay. i'll probably i'll probably see what you're talking about because i'm probably gonna finish it tonight okay well and you and i talked about i can't remember when we kind of had a discussion connor about the mcu and I spoke about how I just kind of have like bowed out essentially because yeah. I know, and I'll see some, some of the films maybe, but like with all these shows and, you know, they're planned out and, and this and that happening. I just kind of, I don't want to like jog it, juggle it all. You know, I, I I'm yeah. definitely someone who's more, you know, I want, I'm a creature of convenience. <laughs> So, like, if the movie just kind of comes out every year, it's like, oh, that's really easy for me to do as a fan. It's just like, oh, well, I'll go see the movie. Here's my 10 bucks, and I'll sit down and watch your movie once a year. But now it's like three movies a year, series, you know, get ready, buckle up. That's Their plan is to just go, go nuts because they can, because the content is really good. I've seen some of WandaVision with her, and I'm like, damn, <laughs> it's a fucking show. <laughs> You know, it's crazy. It's crazy what they're able to do. But Brianna is, you know, you're a huge fan. So you kind of kind of have to, right? I mean, kind of have to watch WandaVision if you want to know what's going on. Yeah, they're going to make sure they all tie together when they're releasing. Yeah. Well, this is, uh, Marvel has come out and said that this is leading directly into Doctor Strange 2. So, and I can see how that's going to, like, where that's going to go. So I get that. But, like, I think I remember, you know, I said this back when we talked about it the first time is, you know, Marvel has enough content for everybody now where the super fans can just plug in, but also casual fans can just kind of do what they want. Yeah. Like you don't need to watch WandaVision to understand what's going to happen in Black Widow. Like you don't need to do that. But it helps. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It's, yeah. Then make sure you can follow if you're not watching like everything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, grandparents ex- watch it and they barely have any MCU like knowledge, but they enjoy it. Yeah, see, I can't imagine. I, I would be so like, oh, I'd be so fixated on what are they talking about right here? <laughs> why, what, why would she make this all up? Did that guy die? You know, <laughs> you know, when WandaVision un- unleashes all this stuff that I just kind of barely see, I, I would, I would have all these questions. You know, <laughs> if I if I didn't know who Scarlet Witch and Vision were and what everything was happening in MCU. That's a that's a uh, a way people watch, you know. That's how you kind of gear your your brain to watch stuff. And I think I'm kind of like a a bit of like a perfectionist when I, I want to see all of it, sort of yeah. thing. If I'm in, I'm in. Mm-hmm. And that that's kind of like a curse, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> completionism. I I have that in a limited capacity. You know, it's like I can't buy just some of a franchise. You got to buy the whole franchise. <laughs> You know, yeah, if one, two, and four. You need part three, or you're not going to stop thinking about it. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So check out Boss Level. It's a really cool movie, and it has my seal of approval. Yeah, it's on. It's on Hulu. We'll, we'll maybe give it a go. I, I know that doesn't sound like it's up your alley too much, but hey, you know, maybe maybe one day. Maybe I like it. Who you knows? Know, you never know. I will say, Mel Gibson was was miscast. Uh. He was cool. It's just they didn't use him nearly as much as they should. Yeah. Well, you know, Melly G. It's an interesting fella. Yeah, I know. I know. Mel Gibson is almost a swear word at this point. <laughs> it's hard to kind of, you know, back him up. So I won't. No, no I, think, I think he has some pretty, pretty solid stuff to offer. 
but he's just like he's just so goddamn weird you know I like anytime he gets brought up I just I just laugh <laughs> I, just, I just I just laugh at the guy and I I usually think about the Key and Peel sketch when they're they're both working at a hotel you guys know what I'm talking about yeah and yeah he's like I love Melly Gibson's <laughs> you know? yeah that, that that's really funny <laughs> I always just think of, you know, how he's kind of on his like third chance and I'm just yeah. waiting for another bomb to drop. You know what I mean? I'm waiting for him to get drunk and shout some more anti-Semitic shit at a cop. I just, yeah. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's only a matter of time. What a sentence you just. <laughs> <laughs> Every day I'm like in the news, like, did it happen? Is, is Mel Gibson in custody again? <laughs> Like what? Only Mel, only Mel could could make you think that way. Yeah. Only Mel Gibson could shout the Jews are responsible for all the world wars, and then still be, you know, starring in movies in 2021. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I some yeah. people have no chances. Some people get three. Melly <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Mellie> Gibson. <laughs> Speaking of second chances, coming to America. Uh, available on prime uh i liked it there it is neither of us watched it right you did you i i started it i was supposed to watch it with my mom today and she kept ditching from meeting so i just never put it on but i i had a <laughs> feeling judging by the trailer that i wasn't gonna like it because it seemed like it was almost like too silly for it to be funny but I am. I'm still going to watch it. This is probably every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm. I'm going to watch it just to see because Eddie Murphy. Yeah, you like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did Dolomite. We like Dolomite, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. We all love Eddie Murphy. He's one of those guys. <laughs> and I, I did a double feature. I watched Coming to America, and then I watched Coming to America. Yeah, that's why I don't like the title. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I am. Um, I love the first movie. It's one of my it's my favorite Eddie Murphy movie. It makes me laugh harder every time I watch it. And uh, I'm glad I did because I had a, you know, kind of a recent appreciation for Zamunda and just everything that happened in the sequel. And I thought the sequel was actually pretty well crafted. I thought it was funny. I thought it was a cool way to do this. Uh, they brought almost everybody back. There were a lot of throwbacks. Uh, a lot of new stuff, too. It builds in the world. There's like a, there's a bad guy in this one, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I dug it. I thought it was neat. It was like a reverse coming to America. You know, this time the guy from Queens comes to Zamunda and gets the culture shock. And I gave it an eight. I enjoyed it. I like that. Yeah. You know, that's one of my favorite things about you, Connor, is this movie got kind of shredded by a lot yeah. of people. And you knew that. I knew that. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to watch it. And this is one of the things I'm jealous about. That, that you have is that you just kind of just barrel through and go ahead and watch it and you come out on the other end and you're honest with yourself either way i think a lot of people shy away from things or their opinion gets kind of you know a little you know foggy from hearing other people's opinions first yeah i've always respected that you, that you can kind of take it head on uh you know i haven't seen it like brown said i'll, I'll probably watch it too at some point um there's a ton of cast members that are you like you said that come back so that's that's really intriguing um and it's you know it's on prime so it's just right there for us to watch someday but i i definitely when i see those really low scores and i hear people say just like nah like this just didn't do the first one justice or, or whatever you know i i definitely am cause to kind of stay away we actually were planning on doing this as the base film of this episode <laughs> and i i kind of made the call to change it off of my own you you really really liked the base film we're doing moxie yeah and i was just kind of like i think i want to watch that and i felt like i only had time to watch one and you know this any polar movie you know it's got it's got in particular there's one cast member that I that I'm I'm a huge fan of that I wanted to watch and we'll talk about him. But uh I just was drawn to that movie more than this one. And that's I'm gonna be honest, mainly because of the kind of rap it's gotten. 
So I, I, I just, with all that being said, I'm rambling. I, I just, I, I respect your kind of ability to just kind of see through that and, and go ahead and watch the movie for yourself. Uh, you know, I, I, I love that, especially when new movies are coming out. It's not easy to do that. Yeah, I agree. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm running three out of four podcasts here. Well, two out of four, really. And um, yeah, but the, the Oscar Sunday, you're doing a, the same amount of legwork I'm doing really as far as watching stuff. Not, you are doing way more than I am on Oscar Sunday. I'll be honest about that. But you're watching the same exact <laughs> movies I'm watching. You're spending, spending the same amount of time as for watching. True. But my point is, you know, I have to, you know, I, I brought this all together. I, I have to, you know, do a little more, I think, to see these films, to see stuff that some people might think are shit. Yeah. And it really comes down to, and this is something I've had to kind of come to terms with as I started, you know, Filmgasm as a website, Filmgasm as a podcast, as I've just grown in, as my own person, is I don't give a flying fuck what anyone else thinks apart from the Filmgasm team. You guys are really the only opinions I value. And everyone else can go fuck themselves when it comes to film. It's all about how you see it subjectively, you know? What do I think? What do you think? That's what, it, that's what matters. There are films that are some of my favorites that are completely torn to shreds by critics. And there are films that are amazing, so I'm told, until I watch them and think, this is dog shit. Why did I watch Chariots of Fire? <laughs> And <laughs> yeah, so that's what it comes down to. If you just don't give a fuck, you'll watch anything. Yeah. 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 I, I hear that for sure. Uh, <clears throat> there's definitely movies that are my all time, all time favorites. And you, you, I, I, I like seek out negative reviews for my all time favorite movies, Yeah, but I like to hear, I like to hear people just, just shit on like Pulp Fiction. I love hearing it. Because it, it it either opens my eyes a little bit or it just reinforces me, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah!" Actually, I like <laughs> I like this even more than I thought. And that's that's just something I like to do in my own time. But I don't think that this person's opinion, uh, if I'm reading a negative, you know, review or something, doesn't mean doesn't matter to my. It doesn't mean anything for my opinion at all. You know, it'll but, never it'll never make me think like, "Oh, maybe I didn't like that movie," because yeah. that would never happen. Yeah. Like the, now, now I will say there, there, yeah, this is, this is way different. This is a totally uh, opposite of like critics, like a movie, like the blind side, it's a, it's a, you know, like a biopic and, you know, Michael Orr, the guy said like comes out immediately after it's about him football player. And is like, man, the movie kind of lied about some stuff. Then you can be like, Oh, this is bullshit. You know, there, that's, that's a totally different, different thing you can say the movie's entertaining or whatever but this guy's clearly upset with the movie that's made about him then you yeah. can you can you can definitely be like yeah this movie sucks like that's fine whatever you know totally different thing you know i i, I think there's kind of context to it you know what i mean there's definitely we've seen that context happen when we did malcolm and marie we've yeah. we learned yeah. new things about that movie and it causes us to kind of reevaluate the way we think about it yes rather than someone just saying that coming to America is just, you know, whatever lame ass opinion they have about it for it being bad. It's way different than, yeah. than like you said, learning yeah. something about a movie like Malcolm and Marie. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily lame, you know, it's everybody, you know, maybe they didn't like it for valid reasons. Maybe they just thought, you know, I, it didn't make me laugh and that's fine, but it means nothing to the way I think about the film. Yeah. 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 My opinion is already, you know, it's my opinion. And that's well, what this whole podcast is built on, <laughs> is opinions. I, mean, I laughed. Exactly. I <laughs> chuckled. I smiled. I enjoyed it. If you didn't, that's great, but leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, it's an interesting discussion for sure. Just kind of like, how, how does your opinion form? How do you, you kind of watch movies? How long does it take you to figure out what you think about a movie? Yeah, Seeing the, Wesley Snipes as an African dictator with a funny walk, that's all I need. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. The ruler of Next Doria. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, and I will praise it. So, that's some 80s shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
from, from everything I had to watch this week, I got four awesome movies that are going to go in my repertoire. All four of these fucking rocked. And th- that's a great week. <laughs> that's so cool. I love that. I love that they all paid off for you and they're all very different. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. And with that, let's move on to Raya and the Last Dragon. Uh, yeah. Disney's latest offering for $30 American. <laughs> uh, fuck off again. We've been there before with Mulan. Y'all need to stop this. Uh, yeah. Isn't that close the last time I was on here? Go ahead, man. Did I say, what if they put this like on Premiere Axe or something? Like, then I won't watch it. And then we were like, we don't know what it's going to be. And sure enough, it's Premiere Access, 30 bucks, which is why I haven't watched it. But yeah. I want to. Yeah. I really I, don't want to give them 30 bucks. Mm-hmm. I totally get that. You're already giving them like seven a month for Disney Plus. Is that the point. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. That's the only service that does this shit. Netflix never does this. Hulu doesn't do this. HBO Max doesn't do this. Only Disney Plus does this. Mm-hmm. They're the most greedy fucks on earth. And I love their movies, but I fucking can't stand them. They make great content. They just, they, they kind of suck. They're kind of greedy. They buy great content. That, they yeah. buy it. Okay. They buy True. it and they let the creative people do their thing and they, they, and they fucking pawn them, them off yeah. after they're done. <laughs> they fucking get rid of them like it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's true they do they buy it, it is true because if you it's fuck if you fuck up at disney <laughs> it is your ass <laughs> they just yeah i i don't know it's it's i don't know how disney got here you know how they became the most dominant conglomerate on earth it's insane and i'm not sure if i really want to know yeah we kind of just you let know? them like we still see their movies. We still watch all their content. We still, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't, you know, shell out the 30 bucks, but I went to the movies and I saw Raya and the last dragon. So we're all complacent at this point. Yeah, no, they, well, they've, they've made investments. The, just the smartest investments they could possibly make uh, like every time, you know, we're like, Oh, Pixar is good. Yeah. We'll take it. Uh, right. Like right after toy story came out, they're like, yeah, that's ours now. You know, <laughs> Jesus, you know, and, Oh, Marvel's doing really good now. Yeah, it's ours now. You know, ESPN. Yeah, deal. You know, like, what the fuck? You know, they have they Star Wars. That's ours. You know, they 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 have so many things that it's not necessarily Disney. It's just that they they've made the smartest investments. They now that they control uh, the things, all these different branches. You know, of these massive, massive entertainment industries, and it's uber scary. And I don't know if I want to know the inner workings of this <laughs> you know what i mean i don't i don't it's it's a little bit daunting you know and there's people who i know uh, there's people who are, we worked with at draft house who would just not see their stuff you know be like no i'm good because <laughs> they don't support the company and I, I understand that but that would be very hard to do <laughs> yeah i don't i can't do that like if to boycott disney what do you, what can you see? <laughs> like, you're pretty much stuck with Warner Brothers. Sony Picture <laughs> Classics. Yeah. 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 I mean, good God. Criterion I'm, Channel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised Stratic. they haven't just straight up offered to buy Sony just to stop having to deal with their bullshit with Spider Man. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're they're really smart and I'm sure they'll figure out the right time to do to do to make all these moves, you know. I mean, they just kind of have swept up. The, and I would, I would I be, be surprised upset. if they were like, hey, DC. <laughs> oh, One day. Who knows? I'm not kidding. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just like, hey, we have all, we'll just, we're just a magnet. So we're just going to take you now and we'll make you guys good. Which, of course, for us as the fans is like, that'd be fine. That'd be great. Because if Taika Waititi could hop on over from Thor to do a Batman movie, we'd be all good. <laughs> you know, like if no way. we could do, do all those things, it'd be great. He should not do a Batman movie. He should 100% do a Superman movie. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman's, well, much different tone. Yeah. But you know what I mean? I'm just taking Marvel's guy. Yeah. I can't imagine, like, if it's entirely possible that one day could happen. And yeah. that would mean that. Yeah. Like, what if, what if I told you, or what if someone told your mom or my mom in the 80s that, oh, yeah, Disney that hasn't even made Lion King yet? And all these movies in the 90s? Yeah, they're going to buy Star Wars. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sure the first thing they'd ask me is, "What the hell's the Lion King?" <laughs> yeah, what's what's Aladdin? What's the Lion King? What's what's Disney Renaissance? Oh, it's coming! Don't worry. <laughs> Do you know that in the '90s or in the '80s at some point, DC had an option to buy Marvel Comics, Oof. and oh. they didn't take it. Uh. They thought these characters aren't worth our time. Shame. <laughs> yeah. What you thinking now, DC Comics? Yeah. Take a look at me now. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but you know, Batman could be on the fucking Avengers in 10 years. Yeah, I really really but wouldn't ask them. I don't like that though, you know. I it, it sounds amazing, but you know, I'm not an act I'm not a 5-year-old playing with Zack and figures. I'm looking for, you know, compelling storylines with compete, you know, competition. I want competition to reinforce so that both sides are doing better work. Problem is, Marvel's has gotten too good. <laughs> yeah, yeah DC. Disney and the, you know behind them, DC's got Warner Brothers, which yeah, they're great, but they're not. Well, really, they're not great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, in 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 comparison, as far as what they're able to do, funding wise, too, it's just not even close. So yeah, not even close. Yeah, Disney's shrugging off you know three hundred million dollar losses like it's nothing. Mm-hmm. You know, now they take they take a surprising amount of risks because they can afford it. Yeah. You know, they're the ones that are taking risks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're, they're like, let's try stuff. <laughs> yeah. Raya in the last dragon is very much a risk. It's a film that, you know, is an entirely Asian cast. It's a film that takes place in like a South Asian environment. It's really cool. Uh, the story is brilliant. Um, the, the characters pop. Uh, it's very dramatic. It's action packed. The ending made me cry. Like it's it's brilliant. Yeah, I'm excited for the to see this. We're definitely going to try to check it out. It's in June. I'm not. I don't is when I'm it comes out on Disney Plus. And you know, this is this is yeah, this is the other part of the conversation where it's like thirty dollars, and that's them taking a risk in for themselves. Like, oh, let's just see what happens here. And that's like one of the most upsetting things as a consumer is them being like. Is Disney saying to us, to all of the consumers, every person who signs up for Disney Plus saying, eh, we're just going to try it, which whoever of you can pay for it, cool. We'll throw the net out. And if not, sorry, you know, you have to wait till June. That just feels like they're trying to like box you in. And uh, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't like it. How many more times are they going to do this? You know, why, why did Onward come out right away? Why did Soul come out right away? Why is Pixar cool and you guys aren't? What's going on? Like, <laughs> what's happening exactly here? To me, it feels like, you know, you're, you're going to school and there's the bully you see every day who takes your lunch money. And you're like, all right, fine, here. And then it's like that for months. And then all of a sudden, one day, you give them their lunch money and that's not enough for them. They kick you down and they demand your clothes. And you're like, but that's not part of the deal. We had a thing going. And they're like, I don't fucking care. You know you're going to give it to me. <laughs> give me your clothes. Drift, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't happen again. And you're like, you know, you're, you're happy it doesn't happen again. But you did not stop thinking about it. Because it was weird and uncomfortable. And it didn't, it didn't, like, they didn't need it. <laughs> they didn't need it. That's the biggest thing about it. It's not like Disney's hurting for money. They're mm. the biggest film company in the world. They're the biggest company in like one of the biggest companies in the world. They're getting, you know, hundreds of millions of subscribers from Disney Plus. They don't need an additional 30 bucks. It's fucking ridiculous. It, yeah. And it, it, man, this conversation's hard because it's like I I can, I can pay this stupid $30, but off of principle. I could go go down the road to half price books and buy me 10 DVDs for $30, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, there's so many things you can do with that. Uh, you, you went to the theater and spent under $30 for three people. <laughs> well, here's the way I look at it. You know, you can be proud and happy that Ted Bundy probably saved some lives when he worked for the suicide hotline. Still fucking killed a lot of people, still a monster. But he did do that one good thing. So you can love and hate anybody. You can love and hate companies. I can bitch about Disney all day long and still go see their movies. Because you know why? 
I don't know, but I'm going to fucking do it. <laughs> well, because, because they've offered you over time, <clears throat> over, over your life, especially you and like uh, us three, they've given us, like we've mentioned the Disney Renaissance, you know, they've, they've given us this recent surge in the MCU that was just like, holy shit. They really started taking care of what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they've given us Disney plus and these different shows. We talked about WandaVision earlier. Pixar <laughs> for us, for us, we've grown up with all of those from toy story to soul. We've seen all of them, you know, and that that's why, you know, it's become, it's kind of in our DNA. You, I remember you talking about on, um, Oscar Sunday episode 26 for Beauty and the Beast. We talked about some some 90s stuff and you talked about Lion King and how it just kind of just became a staple and just kind of taught you it was the first thing that taught you about confronting death. So if that is what Disney did for you at five, six, seven, eight, nine years old and continues to do it, of course they're going to get your money. Of course they are. Same for me, same for Brown, same for so many people, right? <laughs> It's, it's just, we're always going to have this conversation because it's, we have a right to, because we are the ones, again, we're the ones consuming. We have a right to complain when it's not going exactly fairly, you know, because most of the time it is fair. Most of the time it is when you see soul on there for on, on the thing that's you're paying $8 for it. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. This new movie that they made is on this service. I already paid for it. Yeah. That's, that's great. That's cool. You're working. Here's my money. You, I scratch your back. You scratch mine. You know, that's how it works. But then when it does this, you know, out of nowhere, $30 for this new movie, Mulan and now Raya just kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And you've had a lot of good taste. You, you mentioned how you, <laughs> you gave the lunch money a little bit over and over. It's like, yeah, I'm used to this. I'm used to this, but that one knock or that two knocks, like it, it, it hurts, you know, and it's frustrating. And it's always going to be, a, it's always going to be a conversation. I'm always going to complain about a giant, massive company that has everybody by the balls and they hold it a little tighter. I'm always going to complain. Well, I think my biggest issue with it is that ultimately what they're doing is they're taking advantage of people who have no other option. People who are stuck at home, you know, they want new content and Disney's bleeding them dry. And that's fucked up. So I think that's my biggest problem with the third. If it was like, you know, regular times and we weren't dealing with a pandemic and Disney was like 30 bucks for a new, for a new movie, I'd be like, I'd be upset, but I might think about it a little more. But during a pandemic, when we have very, you know, more like a, a lot of more important things to be thinking about and be purchasing 30 bucks extra on a movie is, is fucked up. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's it's yeah, it's the world they live in. They can they can kind of have fun with it like that. Sad. When, when I heard the new CEO of Disney, like he came out and said, like, anytime I want to, I can go straight to the vault and watch any movie we've ever pulled. I can go to the, you know, he started bragging about all his like rights as a Disney CEO, and I wanted to kick him off a roof. Yeah. So I yeah, I mm. doesn't it, doesn't that just suck that like yes, these creators and these actors and these you know writers directors we they're awesome you know like like robert downey jr playing iron man and the fact that disney was in control of that was like yeah fuck disney but this guy's great at playing iron man. <laughs> you know that's that's what we're talking about is like yeah but the people who are in control of these movies john favre taika way titty these guys who russo brothers these guys are cool these guys are cool they're doing cool work well i don't and I don't credit Disney with Marvel's success at all. No, I credit Kevin no, Feige. That sucks. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. I. Oh. <laughs> so it's it's an amazing yeah. So it's an ongoing <laughs> conversation. I'll, I'll always yeah. always get brought up. Yeah. But when you get a chance, uh, Raya and the Last Dragon is a nine, and it's fantastic. Who was your what was your favorite voice performance voice actor? Easily Aquafina. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah, she plays the dragon and she's hilarious. It's, yeah, but Kelly Marie Tran did an amazing job too. It's a very, very good cast. Awesome. And the characters are, you know, it, it doesn't feel like a kid's movie in the slightest. It feels very grown up. And uh, it, 
this is going to go down as a Disney classic. I can in, in 20 years, this is going to be one that people are going to still be talking about. Awesome. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so with that, uh, let's get into Moxie, <laughs> our movie of the week. Uh, Netflix, who never charges us extra. Thank you for that, Netflix. Yeah, and that this came out March 3rd, right? Yeah, I didn't expect it to come out that soon, so I watched it pretty early. So I have no uh, talking points, really. We're just going to kind of wing this one. Yeah, well, we, yeah, I got, we, you got, we got plenty to say, I think. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I've kind of like grappled with this movie throughout the, throughout today while I was at work and just kind of thinking about it. And I, I you know, uh, for me, it was the only movie I watched out of this group. You know, you, you, you kind of carried the, carried the load there <laughs> and uh i i i i liked moxie but i i i thought it was a little undercooked that's, that that's what a lot of people are saying it didn't go as far as it as it should have and yeah well, well and and i think undercooked can can mean a few things i think I mean, these are just some general thoughts off the bat i know we can get into the cast because i'm excited to talk about some of the individuals here but when I when I say undercooked, I, I mostly mean that it wasn't wasn't one piece of chicken that was undercooked. It was a bunch of little pieces of chicken that were undercooked. If you know what I'm saying, it it kind of put multiple things out there and didn't ever fucking flip them. <laughs> didn't ever exactly take one of those things to to uh, exact core or exact. Uh, place of conflict and then and then it would bounce to something else you know it bounced to this bounce to that and i i felt the uh i mean the dinner scene i felt what like was a complete kind of shifter in in what was going on which is why i'm glad that the seth character kind of called her out but i i I felt as though there were multiple times where it could have gone into a character that was had a much more interesting perspective and then it didn't like claudia her best friend or lucy just kind of stopped and then we kind of go kind of reel back and then we go back in again. That's what I mostly mean by undercooked, that it kind of kind of never flipped it, flipped it over, you know. And only one side got burnt. <laughs> and, and I just I felt that as I was thinking about it. But I did enjoy aspects of it. And overall, as a movie, I think it's, you know, I think it's worth watching. I think it's a movie I'd recommend. But I, I'm excited to kind of dig into it and figure out what you guys uh, like about it. And I think I'm kind of the odd one out here okay interesting uh well with that let's get into it um moxie was based on the novel of the same name by jennifer matthew i don't know if y'all have, i didn't know this was based on a book yeah i know i had read that while watching it but i i never read it no uh it was directed by comedy icon amy poehler uh snl alum and star of nbc's parks and recreation for seven seasons her only previous directing gig was 2019's Wine Country, also for Netflix. Um, she also plays Vivian's mother, Lisa. And uh, I love Amy Poehler to death. She's one of my favorite uh, comedians. And uh, I love that she did this almost like a counterpart to Mean Girls, which was Tina Fey's movie. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. They're like, it's a great double feature right there. Yeah, God, I love Mean Girls <laughs> so much. Yeah, Mean Girls is wonderful. 2004, right? Yeah, just yeah. like a lights out movie. Yeah, and I definitely thought about it a lot because Amy Poehler, you know, is Rachel McAdams' mom in that movie. Pretty crazy to think about that. <laughs> but she's she's obviously kind of like off her rocker in that movie. And in this one, she's a she's a pretty fucking cool mom in this movie and was my second favorite performance of the whole movie. I thought she was great. Right on, right on. Uh, Moxie stars Hadley Robinson as Vivian, a shy but outspoken young feminist who sparks a school-wide revolution. Her career just started, and she's already appeared in Little Women, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, the miniseries Fosse Verdon, and the series Utopia. So she's got a pretty good start here. And I thought she was lights out in in Moxie. I, I really liked her character. Me too. I thought she was a good but she played she played it well and I liked her character a lot and I think the vibe that she was giving off it felt it it felt authentic to like 
I guess the mindset of like the high school experience at what 11th grade is what yeah. she's in yeah 11th grade I thought that was pretty cool and I thought it felt pretty authentic and she I like to see like her um relationship dynamics with like Claudia and then with Lucy and to see kind of her blossom from like being like that one girl with just like the one friend to like finding her voice and venturing out and trying new things and eventually having this big support system. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a good lens to see this story through. And um, I personally, I, as much as I did love the movie, I thought this would have worked a lot better as a series. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, that's my, that's one of my main things about this is, First off, did you guys know that this actress is 26 years old? Did you guys know that? I thought she was was like 14. (laughs) Yeah, 26. Yeah, she just turned 26. Uh, So, yeah, you know, obviously she creates this magazine, Moxie. That's a whole movie. That's a whole ass movie. And we don't really see a whole lot into the actual magazine. And I was like, oh, my God, I want to know about this magazine. I want to know exactly about what's in it. What's like, what's the culture that it's really creating. That was like its own movie. And I thought many times I was like, Netflix could just make like eight episodes out of this and kind of go down the line uh, of each really interesting storyline that's there. And that was, that was one of my main problems was it just kind of, that's what I, that's again, what I mean by undercooked is it kind of didn't tackle any of them. Like I wanted it to, I guess. Yeah, I can totally see that. Um, moving on, we have Lauren Sai, who plays her best friend, Claudia. Uh, Sai's only previous credit is as the mutant switch on the series Legion, uh, which I did not watch. Legion, Noah Hawley, FX. Oh. Awesome. You would like that show. I know it's X-Men, but I, uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's really weird though. I don't know. It's kind of like a X-Men Stanley Kubrick, David Lynch. <laughs> you just got to watch it. <laughs> you think you sold me, but you actually pushed me in the other direction. On I'm that. sure I did. It's o- way over stylized, like completely over. And, and the, the plot is so um, on top of itself, like layered and kind of, yeah, it's. Yeah. On second thought, I don't think you'd like it. <laughs> you would like, uh, you would like Dan Stevens is, is what you would like. Uh, he's got it. He's got it really good performance in that show (laughs) yeah i've i i was toying with you know legion and the gifted the the two x-men shows they made but then you know they kind of just fizzled out after the after the disney buyout so i didn't really see any point yeah understandable uh claudia is an interesting character you know the uh the girl with too much pressure who's you know forced into being the way her mother wants her to be. Uh, I like her story. I wish she'd gotten a little bit more uh, meat into her story, but that's kind of a, a one, my one issue with, with that, with this movie really is I feel like we get pieces of everybody's story, but nobody really other than Vivian gets a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that's, that's like, yeah, that's one of the, I think big, complaints people do have is you have this girl in high school and she has kind of a you know diverse group of friends here and you the movie continually hones in on what's seemingly the most uninteresting story on the surface that that might be wrong that might be wrong I might be wrong but I just I I just feel like there's a lot here with some of these other girls like a lot and I would, I would have loved to see, yeah, especially Claudia, uh, seems to have a yeah very interesting life, and I thought she was an interesting character. And I think it, it, it at times was a, a bit stereotypical with um, choosing for her to be Chinese, and a lot of young Chinese characters kind of get pitted as a smart kid who's under pressure from their parents, got to go to school. I think they did a good job of fleshing it out a little bit, but I, I wanted more. I wanted more to kind of break that stereotype. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought that her kind of being, you know, the jealous friend kind of undercutted a lot of her later development. 
Yeah, yeah. for sure, man. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever have like a a friend like that who just kind of like at some point just kind of stopped agreeing with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, literally. Like in high school? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Never happened to me. <laughs> no, it's 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 annoying. It sucks. <laughs> That's crazy. But no, um, I didn't really see the characters not having enough backstory as an issue until now that you guys have said it out loud because I'm used to movies like Love, Simon doing it where you're just focusing on Simon's story. You're not focusing on his friends and their background stories at all. So it didn't really seem like a problem. But now that you pointed out, yeah, I would love to see like Claudia's background or even Lucy because yeah, oh, Lucy's man. clearly like Afro-Latina. That would be a really cool I know. Like, story. And like actresses in real life yes. too. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I think that if the film had, I think the film should have been from Lucy's perspective. If she's the new uh, kid, cool. She's the, you know, she doesn't know how things work here. So seeing this new, this weird backwards ass school from her perspective, I think would have made you feel a little bit more uneasy, would have made you kind of, you know, you would have been along for the ride a lot more. It's my thoughts. I I think that would have worked out well, because that was my only issue with the movie. It was like, it'd be nice if the main character was a person of color. And it's yeah. like more obvious for it to be either Lucy or Claudia, but more so probably Lucy, because like you said, the new kid in school storyline kind of is a continuous thing. And I think that can probably like an easy but cool way to go about it, more interesting way of going about it. What I would have done is I would have had Lucy as the main character, but I wouldn't have revealed to the audience who Moxie is. I would have had the magazine just appear in the bathroom and then Lucy get inspired by it. And then, you know, them have their meetings. And at the end, in the big rally, that's when I'd have the moment. And it would still be Vivian. But then you, yeah. you, get, to be, you get to feel like, oh, she has all this pressure behind her. And she did this for, like, for everybody. You'd feel that reveal. I think it would be a lot more powerful. Uh, yeah, 100%. I think, I think Vivian as, like, if, if Moxie was, like, her alter ego, you know, and we don't ever really get a look in that. Yeah, I think, I, I think there's, like, yeah, I, I guess I, I guess I saw more movies as I was watching this movie. I was like, oh, I'm seeing stuff here that, and we haven't even brought up like, my favorite guy yet. But I, I, I saw stuff. I saw a lot of stuff that like, like pathways where there was really interesting things there. And I, I, I think at times, not every time, I think at times they chose maybe the more simple route. That's an ongoing issue with Hollywood. Is they do tend to take the easy way out. Uh, very few films actually do go the extra mile for, you know, act like accurate representation and giving us, you know, leads who aren't just white people over and over again. And I would like to see more. I feel like we're inching in the right direction, but we're not walking that fast. Yeah. Or or like a movie that isn't movies about teens and i know that i know you have your issues with like coming of age movies you know and this this definitely has some of that you know some of that going on obviously uh but i i prefer like when i'm watching young people in a movie i prefer something that is just just totally kind of naturalistic something like waves that doesn't isn't so on the nose about i'm a junior this is what i'm going through and you know this is for this is prom this is this moment, you know, because there's like a lot of them, like, you know, movies I love, you know, like Curse of Being a Wildflower is one of them, you know, uh, e- even like Boy Raced and Miseducation of Cameron Post and these different movies that are, they have a lot of similarities and some, it, it'll be like fall, winter, spring, you know, it'll show like these cards, you know, in Lady Bird and in and, and Book Smart. And now this movie is in that, is in that, is in that category of just kind of like, what what separates you you know and and you have to find it as a fan you just kind of have to find it i think this movie has some things to offer though i do too and yeah you're right about you know my issue with coming of age movies which is odd because i wasn't thinking about that the whole time i watched this that never came up to me yeah yeah that, that clearly clearly there's something that separates it for you yeah yeah and i really think it is amy poehler who yeah. gave this yeah. film a, a signature vision that stands out. Like I'd watch this again, and yeah, I, I like. I that. probably will at some point. Yeah, because because I don't know when he's coming up, but my boy Nico, <laughs> <laughs> my boy Nico Haraga is just stellar <laughs> in this movie, and I, I would watch it for him. Yeah. Uh, 
Alicia Pascal Pena plays Lucy. There she is. The new girl who refuses to let the football team be complete dicks without repercussions. Uh, she's currently starring in the Saved by the Bell reboot on Peacock. Oh, that's okay. perfect. Oh my God. <laughs> that's such a perfect cast. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't really care that much about Saved by the Bell, but that's perfect. Yeah, I never, I don't, I don't know anything about Saved by the Bell. I watched it sometimes before school, but yeah, that's it. Um, she's awesome. And I think at one point in the, in the movie, it's revealed that she's gay, right? Somewhere on, on the spectrum of or in think, that, yeah. Bi pan, whatever. Yeah. But there is that big moment where she kisses another girl. Yeah. Yeah. But then that. Oh. That explored a little bit more. Yeah, that never comes up again either. No. Yeah, Lucy is like one. Like, who are her parents? And like, why is she here? And what? Yeah, <laughs> Lucy what was... is going, on? Lucy? I'm like, who are you? And what kind of an eleventh grader tells in another eleventh grader? I hold my, I hold my head high. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fucking cool as shit. And I was like, just keep following. I want the camera to follow her down the hallway. She's way cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's part of the deal though right is that she totally inspires vivian you know like oh my gosh there's this girl that just stood up to that what's his name mitchell 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 wilson or something like yeah. that just like two first names you know <laughs> just this guy this guy that he that played, character oh my god good lord almighty just like oh yeah i i don't know i mean i feel bad for some football players because I know a lot of football players who were just not near that bad of a person. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he just kind of, and the, the, his friend, Jesus Christ, the, his friend was, his weird. buddy was such a stereotype. Yeah. I didn't like that character at all. Like he never had like any sentences. It was just him ooh, like yelling and banging on lockers. And being the whole time. I couldn't, I couldn't take that character. Yeah. You know, that was, <laughs> that guy was a joke. <laughs> For sure. Uh, we're going to get to that guy in a minute here. Uh, I have no idea what their names are. Patrick something, right? The, oh, the, the, quarter, the quarterback, but I don't know yeah. the other guy. Uh, we've got Nico Haraga as Seth, the <laughs> nicest guy in the world. So, yes. Haraga played Tanner in the 2018 film Booksmart. Uh, he is nice to the point where it it's, it's too much. <laughs> like, he's too woke. You know what I mean? Well, also, this is a guy. Yeah, this is hard. Yeah. I love this guy, Nico Haraga. He's going to be in um, North of uh, North Hollywood, that film that I was telling you about, Connor. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Vince Vaughn is in it. Yeah. With all the, some of the boys from mid 90s. He, he's, you know, he's friends with Sonny from mid 90s. You know, he's, he's, he's a proper skater. You know, he makes money doing it and obviously showing it off in the movie. Uh, he's 23 years old. And you can like clearly tell just the way he dresses is like, Oh my God, this guy's like actually cool. You know, (laughs) unlike, unlike high schoolers, he's like actually cool, you know? And it just, it didn't make sense to me in my head while I'm watching. Cause I know this guy, I've seen skating videos of him on YouTube. You know, he's a lot closer to me in age than he is to high schoolers. So, you know what I mean? So when I'm watching him, I'm kind of like, what? He fits more in like a college scene to me in my head. And that's why I think like he was too like woke <laughs> it's, is it was uh, it, it, like, that's who he is in real life. He was just kind of playing himself a little bit and it didn't translate that well to like high school, but he was, he was just my favorite character off of being, you know, I'm just, just biased. I thought he was, I thought he was great. And he has a, Nico has a na- natural kind of knack for being on the screen. Yeah. Uh, it seems like, a lot of those guys from illegal civilization and uh, you know, the guys that were in mid nineties, you know, that like really actually know what they're doing in front of this, you know, in front of the camera. That's really cool. It's funny. I, my high school experience was so different than any high school experience I've ever seen on film or talked to people about. I went to a a, close. Really? I feel like it was. I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. That it was close to yours. I feel like the, the the vibe it wasn't as like peppy as like it is, but I feel like most high school movies like do that. 
they yeah sprinkle that extra burden but it was it was huge like that almost felt like claustrophobic at times like they showed in the film and some of the football players probably weren't on whatever his name michael mitchell not on his level but they were still like some of them weren't like the nicest people yeah there. yeah and so like it, it felt pretty close this one did but that's just the high school the high school's big it's a huge it's unnecessarily huge my high school was super small. It was, you know, small town, Texas. There were 70 kids in my graduating class. And the football team was also, you know, the UIL nerds. They were all the same people. There was no cliques. There was no tribes at my school. Everyone just hung out with each other. So, I, you know, I had buddies who were on the football team. I had buddies who were cheerleaders. I had buddies who were on the UIL teams. I had buddies who were just weird nerds. Like, it was everyone was just friends with everyone. There was no like animosity towards different, you know, none of that shit ever happened in my school. It was yeah. crazy. I think that's yeah. why I have such a problem with high school movies is because I'm like, that didn't fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, 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 I went to a private school uh, and then I dropped out like halfway through my sophomore year. So I just have no, I have no reference, no point of reference. I have no opinion on, especially, you know, movies like this, you know, most, most high school movies are going to, you know, focus on 11th and 12th grade, you know, those last couple of years before you graduate. And yeah. So like American pie, it's just not something that I really get to an extent I do, but like, I don't really get from the high school aspect because I just, I didn't go. And the school I went to for two years, freshman and sophomore year was really small. It's a really small private school. So mine was more, uh, similar to you, Connor, where it was kind of like everybody just kind of hung out, went to lunch at the same time, and that was just what we did. But I literally don't have a memory of junior and senior year because it didn't happen for me. So, so, yeah. so these these movies are they're they're allowed to lie to me because I don't have the experience. <laughs> well, these movies, I like I look at them like in my you know in my high school, uh, like one of my best friends was openly gay, and no one ever at least that I saw, like gave him shit about it. Everyone was just like, Hey, what's up? Like I never witnessed, you know, the big cathartic, you know, we're not so different. You and I moments. It was all just like, Hey, like you're going to be there next, next, uh, the next period. And like, yeah, probably that was most yeah. of the conversations I had in high school. <laughs> just like you yeah. come to that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you there. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I just, you know, didn't go to a normal high school. Maybe I'm the weirdo. Well, because like I went to three different high schools. So the one in Oklahoma is completely night and day compared to like the Texas high school. So the one in Oklahoma was really tiny and everybody did get along. There was like no clicks and stuff like that. But I think it just depends on how huge and where you are. And yeah. being in Texas, the schools are already unnecessarily huge. I definitely felt that clicky vibe. But Oklahoma felt more like tight and normal for me. Yeah. No clicks, no tribes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. You know, they're not all like, you know, Los Angeles high school where the kids are all 35. Everyone's banging each other. There's love triangles everywhere. The football team is, you know, going to state or someone's going to die. Like it's never <laughs> that. It's never <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, you know what? One of my favorite, my favorite 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 things in a, like a high school movie is the school in 10 things i hate about you like fuck off <laughs> that place is a goddamn castle <laughs> oh my god i hate that shit watching watching these like yeah again like 30 year olds act as high schoolers at this giant castle in the middle of seattle just piss right off <laughs> oh my god. i would love to see a movie like that with actual like you know 14 15 year old students like kids that are supposed to be sophomores or something that would be hilarious to just cast them and have like the same stakes <laughs> that'd be perfect yeah and like this is what the real bad badass from a high school looks like compared to heath ledger yeah it's not even close <laughs> just hear like a 14 year old be like you know loudly scream in his like you know prepubescent voice i don't know what i'm supposed to be you know something like that <laughs> have that big moment that would be amazing Oh, man. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. All right, here we go. The asshole. Patrick Schwarzenegger plays Mitchell Wilson, 
the biggest douchebag I've seen in quite a while. Like this guy, it's almost unrealistic how much of an asshole it is. He is. It, it, it is. It, it, it's it's robotic. It's yeah. a little bit robotic. It's a bit a bit much for me. Like who? At first, first I thought it was gonna be a, an okay bully kind of character, and then as time went on, I was like, oh my god, this I, guy has no. <laughs> I get why you need to hate him, but I think it would have been cooler and more in theme with the movie if he was more of a like you know an asshole by circumstance and like learned something along the way. It would have been kind of cool if like towards the end he's like, hey, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Instead, he's like, nope, he's a rapist. He's going to, like, jail. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Crazy. Uh, so this guy is the son of the governor himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Would it be weird if an unrelated Schwarzenegger just showed up in Hollywood? That would yeah. be amazing. I don't know how popular of a name that is in Europe. Maybe, maybe like, in a porno. That's about it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Schwarzenegger. You know, it's spelled different, spelled a little differently. Like, I swear to God, I'm related to him. No, you aren't. You don't even have the accent. You're just like, you're from like Florida. Yeah, exactly. He's my uncle, I swear. It's like, uh, it's like a Mac on It's Always Sunny when they go to the drive-thru on that episode. uh, It's uh, the gang gets trapped in season seven. He's like, I am a Swedish plumber. I come to fix your pipes. (laughs) And Dennis is like, do not do the accent. Do not do the accent. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> oh, so this guy's been in the game for a while. You know, famous dad. He is going to have no trouble whatsoever acing auditions. Which uh, is funny because he's a privileged white guy. And he's a privileged white guy in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like if your son, I mean, if, if your dad is like the most famous actor slash politician slash bodybuilder in history, you're probably going to have a pretty easy life. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have thought? So that's on my bucket list. <laughs> just got to turn my dad into Arnold Schwarzenegger and suddenly yeah, I'm on easy street. <laughs> or, or just be reborn, baby. I don't know. So he's, um, he had a minor role in the bench warmers and he's since appeared in films such as The Grown Ups 2. Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse, Midnight Sun, Daniel Isn't Real, and the miniseries The Long Road Home. And he is, yeah, like we said, just pure, like, it's almost like somebody found, like, the essence of douchery, put it on the periodic table, and it was a picture of this fucker. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah. He, he, played, he played that very well. Too, too well. Like, too well. And I was just like, oh, God, I kind of don't like looking at your face anymore. Like, I know you're acting, but you're playing this asshole, douchey, whatever you got going on too the well. Sm- it's the smarm. It's the constant smirk. Yeah. Like, and- nothing got under his skin the whole movie. He's just like, I don't even fucking care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously got, like, major issues at home, obviously, yeah. you know? And that's a whole other movie in itself. You know, this guy clearly is, like, not getting the proper love at home. Explore I, that, you know, make us sympathize with this guy. Don't just make us yeah. want to punch him. Yes. Okay. So this is, this is, this, uh, in, in Euphoria, the TV show, there is a, the quarterback, actually, in that show, one of the main characters in this show where they have multiple episodes, sometimes they go into his world and it, it makes you really think about him. Cause at first you're like, fuck this guy. Like this guy is a piece of shit, yeah. garbage, like you learn all this nonsense about him, but then you start learning about his parents and about what's going on at home. And you're like, Oh my God, that place is a jungle. Like I kind of, I don't, you don't necessarily sympathize with him, but it gives him some context and gives him that, that, you know, humanizes him. And he's not just this stereotype, like just douche. And I think all three of us obviously agree that it's almost a little too, too like on the nose and realistic, a little too like, Whoa, okay, man, we get it. (laughs) What would you, we get what you're going for. I wish we got to see this guy's you know, home life, gone home and seen, you know, his dad, Arnold, is like, son, what, you got to be great on the football or else you will disgrace the family name. You know, I, I mean, actually cast Arnold. I want to see him there. Like, you know, ah, oh, it's the Midwest. I want to see that. Oh, but my God. I think you get to feel like, oh, OK, he's very pressured and he's, you know, he's an asshole by choice. And I don't know. But then, you know, if you do that, you can't have the, the, the rapist reveal at the end because that undercuts any chemistry. I mean, any uh, development you would have. Yeah, no, that was 
that was a whole bomb, you know, that, that yeah. gets tra- into the movie and it's like, whoa, holy shit. That, that's a, that's very, very serious, very serious. And I, maybe we'll get to that. You want to talk about that scene later? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about, we'll get to that later. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Really tough. Um, Ike Barinholtz plays Mr. Davis, the English teacher who is not particularly woke. This is the source of some of my favorite scenes in this movie. Uh, he was, yeah. Barinholtz appeared in a bunch of stuff in the past few years, such as Neighbors, Sisters, the Angry Birds movie, Suicide Squad, Snatched, The Disaster Artist, Bright, and The Hunt. He's one of the most popular that guys working today. And uh, he's hilarious in this. It's just like the guy who doesn't want to get involved, but as an educator knows he probably should. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I, I think that scene when the phone is, is up and he's like, you see, I'm in a tough spot here. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was really funny and really, really true to what I think. And I thought Marsha Gay Harden, there were a few moments where she also captured that just kind of like what, what do 40, 50 year olds think right now? Yeah. In, in the climate of what's going on and just how, socially what's happening and and using words like woke and sometimes almost like making fun of it and, and th- that's super fascinating i think and I, I i thought ike i think i don't i don't not just for this movie but i think ike plays that i think he's like 44 years old now he yeah. plays that so well plays that kind of like lost in lost in the you know in the new age of what's you know social media he's perfect for it or he's kind of like ah but he knows I should be a part of it. You know, I, I, I really like that. I think I did a, did a really good job in this movie. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I like, you know, when he, at the end, when he you know, raises his hands and he's got the stars on his hand, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. man. Nice. Uh, Clark Gregg plays Lisa's boyfriend, John. He's been known primarily for playing agent Phil Coulson in the first phase of the MCU and on the series agents of shield. And he was underused as fuck. Like I wanted more Clark Gregg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. He has obviously at the the dinner scene where he kind of gets to say a couple sentences and then nothing. He gets just gets yelled at. And uh, yeah, I would have liked a, a, a moment of reconciliation where he's you know, where she's like you know make my mom happy or I'll kill you and he's like you got it. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. When she's just wasted. Yeah, yeah. No, he he's kind of just a punching bag for a little bit there. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, there are a lot of potential. Like this could be a pilot. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Hundred percent. Could have been a pilot. The Vivian, the Vivian episode, and then they could move on to Lucy and move on. You know, they could do that format where you kind of jump from character to character. I don't know. There's a lot of things you could do with this. Finally, we have Oscar winner Marsha Gay Harden as Principal Shelley, an absolutely terrible administrator, and she should have no business running a school ever. Uh, Harden won her Oscar for 2000's Pollock and was also nominated for her performance in 2003's Mystic River. The last time we talked about her was when we did The Mist on the Filmgasm podcast. She plays Mrs. Carmody, one of Stephen King's scariest villains, and she does a great job at just playing like Midwest woman who doesn't get it. Oh my God, yeah. What did you think of her? I thought she was, she shouldn't have been working at a school. <laughs> she... Yeah super fucking lazy and didn't want to help for shit and it annoyed me the entire time i was like this is like who they're depending on basically the scene where she shows up and tells caitlin to go home because of the tank top yeah i have seen that happen so many times when in high school like girls who just showed up you know with like the skirt that didn't touch the fingertips and all that bullshit and it always never made any it never made any sense to me and i like this movie you know, showed that, like, why are we doing this? It's, it's, you know, why are women responsible for the way men think about them? Yeah. I liked that going you know, in high school, the whole, like, you're wearing a spaghetti strap where your, your shorts are too short and it's like, but I'm wearing clothes and I'm here to learn. So like, what's the big deal? But I, I have been sent home behind that thing. That's the dumbest thing. I don't think they've stopped doing that either. I'm pretty sure it's still happening. It's gotten worse. <laughs> yeah, pretty bad. Uh, the um, and also the scene where Lucy goes to talk to goes to complain about Mitchell, and says she's being harassed, and Shelley goes like, "Whoa, whoa, don't use that word, or I got to do a bunch of stuff." Like, fuck yeah. you! That's the worst thing you could say to somebody. 
Oh my god. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, we. No, you and I, we can, we can figure something out here. But if you're gonna use that word, then yeah, I gotta fill a bunch of stuff out. <laughs> it's like, oh, gross. <laughs> yeah, she's terrible. Like compared to Tim Meadows and Mean Girls, not even close. Get the no. fuck, get the fuck out. <laughs> I did not leave the South Side for this. <laughs> oh, man. Hard to not think about Mean Girls when you're watching an Amy Poehler directed high school movie. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a uh, a few years ago. I went to a uh, movie party of Mean Girls with a, with a friend, oh, and so- uh, that was such a blast. I hadn't seen it in years, and I was like, "This is so fucking funny. Why have I not watched this movie constantly?" Yeah. And <laughs> I can't wait till the giggle guys get to that one. Yeah, it's a true true gem of the 2000s, not just not just in the kind of high school conversation. Yeah. I think I think that and super bad are like no, no, they're they're really funny comedies that yeah. kind, of, kind of fucking go there at times and get really really raunchy and really really funny. Uh and just have really good performances. You know, Mean Girls is filled with Awesome, awesome performances. And yeah, Amy Poehler is one of them. <laughs> she doesn't even go here. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. <laughs> the Danny, DeVito, <laughs> the Danny <laughs> DeVito line was the one that I think you first said around me. And I was like, all right, we're going to get along. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first time I saw that, I, I almost died. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Great movie. Um. So Moxie has an IMDb score of 6.7, uh, Rotten Tomatoes score of 66%. It's a Netflix original, so that's where you can always find it. So let's talk about some stuff about the film itself we really dug or didn't d- dig. If that's where you want to go. Uh, what do we got? Brianna, what, what, was, uh, what, what was your favorite thing about this movie? I, I've spoken a lot. You know, We've kind of dug into some of these actors, and I've said a lot of what I think. So what, what was that you liked about it? I liked how it did touch on a lot of things like it did in the movie involving the high school because I feel like a lot of older people or like uh, like parents don't fully grasp what can happen in high school and how serious it can be or how damaging it can be. They kind of just brush it off. So I think movies like this are good to show that and also to show that you should use your voice and speak up for what you want to because I think there's a history of people not doing that. And obviously that doesn't get us anywhere. And I feel like if more people gave a shit, more people show that you should give a shit, then maybe more things can get done and we can be on a different path. And I think it touched on that pretty well. Um, Lucy and, what was it, Seth? Yeah, Yeah. Lucy and Seth are definitely my my favorites out of the entire movie, I want to say. I'm pretty sure they're my favorites for sure. I liked them for the main character, Vivian. And I like what they brought out in her. And I like what they like brought out actual change in her. And she wasn't just like a one note repetitive character. So I thought that was pretty cool. I liked how Amy did a really good job. She really did. Um, There are two things I was really hoping to see in this movie that we didn't get. One, I wanted to see one of the girls, any one of the girls, knock out Mitchell Wilson. I was hoping it was the Lucy. soccer girl. What oh, was her what? name? Um, uh, was it Kira? Well, there's two of them. <clears throat> Kira? Yeah. Kira? Yeah. And Amaya, I think. I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Just clock them. <laughs> they, they were fucking great. Those were two awesome. girls were awesome. I, I loved when they were just kind of like joking around about uh, the, the the uniforms that they have, how shitty they are, and you're like, maybe mm-hmm. we can get some fucking money for, <laughs> yep. for our uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> Football, man. I don't, drains the budget. Every school in the country. Yep. Fucking ridiculous. And then the other scene I wanted to see was, I wanted Principal Shelley to try to expel Vivian for Moxie. And then uh, Vivian's mom comes in and just backs her up and just like annihilates Shelly with words. Like I wanted to see that. I wanted to see the kind of, you know, I support 100% what my daughter's done and you are a monster. I wanted like a parent to take Shelly to, you know, 
like, let her know, like, you are a horrible person for how you've treated these people and let this go on for so long. You know, yeah. you, you actually, you know, I, I, I went through almost the exact same thing, except it was a different character. I wanted it to be Claudia's mom to finally speak English and be like, fuck you. You know, that would have been great. That would you have messed, been great. You messed my kid's head. <laughs> you, you, I'm taking you down. <laughs> I'm going to speak English for you. <laughs> You see this knife? <laughs> I'm going to teach you to speak fucking English with this knife, Marsha Gay Harden. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that went to a dark place. <laughs> I, I, I wanted that to happen so bad. I was like, yeah. bring the thunder. <laughs> Cloudy as well. It's like an aftermath with Shelly. And yeah. um, after the fact with Mitchell. Well, yeah, he, she just goes to the classroom and is like, like, hey, come with me now. You're about to go to jail. But like, I <laughs> wonder if we would have seen like guilt at all in that. Because like, she did say that he's a problem. He's bothering me. And she was like, no, I don't want any parts of that. Yeah. So I would have loved to see like, if there was any like remorse there. Once she like finally was like, oh shit, I was wrong. Or I should have done something. I should have been a better administrator or something. That would have been cool to see. Without like without saying all that, what could have been a great gesture at the end of the film is to see like Shelly with the stars. Yeah. 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 Something simple like that. Yeah. Yeah. Any kind of acknowledgement towards it would have been cool. And I feel like it would have fit, like it would have fit the vibe of the movie for sure. And I don't, I don't see why we couldn't have gotten that. Oh, yeah. Or like something even she could even go up to Vivian and be like, I like the name of your club, you know, just like yeah. she's the one who said Moxie at the beginning of the film. Yeah. Something simple, yeah. you know, ah, come on. <laughs> Mm, yeah i think we don't get there's not oh, there's no redemption in this film and i think that a film like this that talks about how we have to change for for the better should have some scenes where we see the bad people change for the better if not you know not all the way that would be crazy but like a little bit yeah That's something not. like the teacher's transition would have been cool because like i know that he wasn't necessarily a bad guy but he was definitely like on the fence he was you know, which is not good in any situation exactly. yeah and so to see him come around and have the stars that was cool i was like why can't we do that for some other characters here and stop like it leaves kind of like that thought process of what if or what is and i i feel like it wasn't needed for this kind of movie yeah, yeah. Oh, or i'm thinking of another another thing that would have been cool is if we would have gotten visuals of because clearly a lot of people were on board by the end of the movie. Yeah. And when you see the classroom that Mitchell is in before he gets pulled away, it's like empty. It's just him and his friend. Yeah, it's like three people. There's like yeah. one other kid like listening to music. <clears throat> and so you're just thinking like, why aren't we seeing, I, like I, we see Seth with the stars. We see Seth is on board. What, like, are, are there football players who are on board? Are we, you know, or are there football players who are actually like, yeah, fuck Mitchell. This guy sucks. <laughs> I, I, I actually, I'm a normal person <laughs> and I'd like to, I'd like to support this because it seemed like everybody was on board, but they made it seem like it was kind of sides. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think that scene where um, they're trying to announce or like they're going to give their speeches or whatever. And Mitchell ends up going on the school announcement mm -hmm. thing and he's trying to get people to cheer for Mitchell and everybody's cheering for Akira. I feel like that was kind of like the scene where you That's could true. see that everybody has That's moved true. over to That's the true. right side. True, but that fucker still won. Yeah. 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 I was hoping there was going to be like a scene like maybe where Shelly just didn't want to like give in. And so she read the wrong name or something. I was hoping for some kind of twist, but it didn't happen. Well, odds are that, you know, with, with Mitchell uh, getting a rape charge, he's probably not getting that scholarship anymore. So. He might get it by default at this point. Yeah, I think he played his last football game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this film reminded me so much of Promising Young Woman, which is kind of the college-level version of this, of a similar story. And uh, that movie's very much uh, ends with no redemption, with very much like, you can't trust fucking anyone. It's kind of the the, the message of that movie and I, I love that movie but it's dark this movie is a little bit more hopeful but it still has that you can't trust most men vibe because yeah. seth's the only male character who really gets i, I know i don't want to keep saying this but woke <laughs> and i just I, I wish we got to see a little bit more of you know the football team kind of having like you said you know 
a little bit more development. Um, yeah, and it's not it's not to say, you know, I, obviously it's coming from a male perspective. I don't need to see males succeed in like, oh, all of a sudden. But what I do want to see in a film about feminism is feminism truly growing and winning. And, 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 and I guess I was just at times a little confused. And, and I, I think it's, it's good to show all kinds of people fighting for the right thing. You know what would have been a fucking amazing ending? So with Moxie as an official club now, they'd have like, you know, a booth at like some, you know, game or something. And other students from other, ki- other, other schools would go to the Moxie booth and read about this and they take it back. And they do, they could do like a montage of kids in different schools finding the Moxie magazine and reading it. And it spreads throughout the country. And you just see like, you know, Moxie pop up on, on a map and it just, you just realize it's spreading and you can't stop it. This is, yeah, cool. it's become, yeah, an official, an official pub, but you know, publication where this team of girls are actually making something for the whole world. Yeah. To see, that'd be cool. Yeah. To show, you know, feminism, feminism is not going away. It's important and it's, you know, spreading and that would be nice. Um, something that really like un- made me kind of like shocked was the whole list thing where Ooh. they ranked the women of their class. I did, is that a thing? Like, do high schools, like, that sounded a little far-fetched. It's, mm-hmm. like, really fucked up. There's got to I mean, be a school there out is, there. But yeah, 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 but it's never on, like, that great of a scale. I, mean, I think that the whole school's wrapped in on, and they're waiting to see what rank they got. Like, I don't think that is a thing. That's, like, ridiculous. <laughs> even the teachers were like, you know, just be happy. You know, be happy you got something. Like, I'm, yeah. like what the fuck? <laughs> Be happy you were acknowledged. Oh my god. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like it's like uh worse than the parents in Dazed and Confused being okay with their kids like slapping other kids in the ass with wooden paddles. Like it's just as fucked up. <laughs> I guarantee you they 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 let it like you know fly by under the whole it's tradition thing. I guarantee you that's how they like the teachers like you know, don't deal with it. They're like, well, they've always done it that way. Yeah, Marsha Gay Harden's like, well, I got most bangable when I was a senior. So you're like, okay, well, you, you, can't, you, you can't do that. that. That's... Yeah, you can't, you can't do that, Marsha. <laughs> yeah. Like when Lucy goes, you know, when she's labeled like the C word, I think was what was got what got thrown around, and she goes to Shelly and is like, but what was that really? I'm, I mean, I'm just going to assume the C word is the C word. Ah, uh, see, I think it. Oh, oh, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. I think it was something else. Okay. Because, because. I didn't think about that until just now. Wow. Because the C word is, you know. Is, it could be a number of things, but like two like bad things. What do you. Oh, like one of them's a slur and then the other one's like. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what I, I thought it was. Oh. You know, oh, okay. I'm picking up on you there. Okay. I thought it was, yeah, that's where my mind kind of went because, because, and she's just like, clearly this is directed at me, you know, sort of thing. And she goes right up to Shelly and again, Shelly just shuts her down. Yeah. Marsha clearly has like a lot of issues to, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to get through in this movie, this character. (laughs) The way she's like sticks and stones, like talking to her, like she's five years old. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. Um, (laughs) anything else you guys? Oh man. I mean, yeah, I, I, uh, clearly we could kind of just talk about it forever it's like uh i don't know what what you it's an open-ended movie i guess where like a lot of stuff is up to interpretation which is good and bad you know it's, it's great for conversation um i i do think that we pointed out some some valuable um you know just kind of like little hiccups that we that we felt yeah. like are in the film just with uh with the multiple facets going on multiple you know subplots and and whatnot. I, I think we all agree that this could be either stretched down into something bigger or they could have honed in on one thing. But overall, you know, I, I do think there's things here and I, I would recommend it. It's on Netflix. I yeah, think sure. I think Amy Poehler has an eye, you know, for like uh, it's not it's not groundbreaking, but it's interesting, yeah. you know, very similar to how I felt about Olivia Wilde's eye and Booksmart where I was like, there's something there, you know, there's really something there. Yeah. And 
And I appreciate that Amy's, you know, move, moving in that direction. You know, it's cool that she's kind of, you know, kind of doing that, you know, and still able to, obviously she's still got it acting wise. And I think there's multiple cast members who are worth watching. I think Nico is, is a guy that's uh, going to be kind of, kind of in the, in the movie industry now for, for quite some time. And uh, I, yeah, I've got good things to say about it. And then, yeah, I think overall the plot is just a, a bit misguided at times and that's okay. You know, it's movie making is fucking hard and not everything is going to be perfect, but uh, mm-hmm. overall, I, overall I gave it a seven uh, personally. I, I think there's, there's definitely room there to, there's like potential, you know, there's room there for the movie to, to grow on me. But, but I, I, just as a film overall, yeah, I give it a seven. I think there's, there's some problems I have with it plot wise, but overall, yeah, man, I, I enjoyed it. I'm glad you, glad you kind of recommended it to me, Connor, and that we got to do it on the show here. So I, I'm grateful for that. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Brianna, what about you? Um, I did. I, I really liked it. I think despite how um, Nico's character, Seth, is like perceived as maybe like too aware, or too woke, I think it is cool that since the movie is centered or basically like centered around like feminism, it's cool to showcase that dudes could also support this as they should support this. And I think yes. that his character is a good example of that. And there needs to be more characters like this sprinkled in these like high school themed movies so that it can be normalized. And I think he played his role very well as well. And besides like the, the multiple plot lines and stories and all that, I, I still rated a seven. I think, it, I think it's good. I think it could have been better, but like it wasn't like horrible. I no, would, I would no. watch it. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think it's got some fun stuff to offer. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Right on, guys. Uh, well, through all of it, I found myself more entertained and in- engaged than like you know upset about the plot or its story structure. Yeah. I yeah. found myself kind of thinking like, this is awesome, and I love that this is happening. I enjoy this movie a lot. I want to introduce it to my, you know, my uh, younger cousins. I want them to see what a good high school environment is supposed to look like. This is how you should fight for what you really believe in. You should never settle when somebody tells you to sit down. You should never do that. And um, I give it a nine. Nice. Nice. All right. I like that. (laughs) Yeah, so you had a good weekend. I had a really good weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That that is all this week. Hmm? Uh, I've watched um, uh, Branded to Kill on Criterion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, what was the other thing I watched? God damn it. That, uh, that Elaine May movie. Uh, a New Leaf with Walter, Walter Matthau. Matthau? Matthau? How do you say it? Walter know. Matthau? Matthau. Matthau? Matthau? Yeah. Matthau. Yeah, Walter Matthau. Awesome movie. You would love that. It's very, very funny. 1971. Yeah. Elaine May's directorial debut. That's what I was doing. I, I should have been watching Coming to America. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, you take what you can get. <laughs> um, outside the show, I had a good week as well. I watched um, Point Break uh, oh, for the first time. Hey. <laughs> Fucking love that. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, Peeping Tom, which I was very impressed with. And uh, Inherit the Wind, which I also absolutely fucking loved. So I just had a solid week of movies. Like good <laughs> I'm stuff. feeling good. Yeah. And I have a feeling next week might undercut that because our filmgasm is going to be a weird one that I don't know about. So we'll see. Hopefully it's a great movie. <laughs> um. So next week's sneak preview is going to be fairly bare bones compared to today's episode. Uh, only one movie comes out next week that we can tell anyway. It's Cherry, the Russo brothers' new heist thriller starring Tom Holland that debuts on Apple, on Apple TV Plus on Friday. Uh, it's already had a, a minimal theater run and has been getting pretty mixed reviews. Yeah. Uh, it's two and a half hours long, so it better be fucking worth it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be covering that and we'll see what else comes our way um, we don't know yet don't miss 1981's Hell Night on Wednesday's Filmgasm 2008's In Bruges on Oscar Sunday and another Giggle Guys on Friday thanks for listening have a great week and keep watching movies mm-hmm.